And Ecobank brings us uh, AM business on this holiday. It was once a vital crop in Ghana's agricultural sector, producing about 30,000 tons in the early 60s for textile production. However, the cotton industry is gradually fading following the decline of the fortunes of the Ghana Cotton Company Limited. So this week on AM Business, we explore the remains of the once vibrant industry and how it can be revived. Currently here at the January, where the production of cotton used to be at its peak in the late 70s. Now, what is left of this factory it's just beds, a lot of them. Now, the reason why this factory is dormant is because they are not getting the volumes required to boost production. Now, Rianco Cotton Ghana Limited, this factory located in Tamale used to be one of the major production sites for cotton production in Ghana. The agricultural commodity producing company, Rianco Ghana, took over the then Ghana Cotton Company Limited in 2011, which was facing some challenges. Years down the line, and the story is no different for Rianco. Chief Accountant Aliu Basha Mohammed tells me how a decline in seed cotton supply is crippling their business. While the farmer is not making money, that particular farmer would not be motivated to do the production. When you take 2014-2015 season, we paid a seed cutting price of 2 CD 10 pesos to a farmer. Now the following year, this price dropped to 1 CD 60 pesos. Now as a farmer, this particular decrease in price will certainly affect you. In its first season of production, the company produced about 4,500 metric tons of seed cotton. As an effect of the inconsistency on the part of the farmers, production level continued to drop, reaching 2,000 metric tons in 2015-2016 cotton season. A tour around the factory shows a sorry sight. Most of the tractors and trucks, which could be used for production, lie dormant. All this here that I'm standing on is seed cotton. Now the season has not yet started for them, but then this one they have here, they're going to use them after the maintenance works that are ongoing. Now on a good day, or during their peak season, they have about seven warehouses, and they are filled to the top with seed cotton. Then it is sucked through this tunnel here, goes into the factory, and then the processing is done. But then because the volumes that they require, they are not able to meet that supply, they are only able to do about three to four now. And all this year, a seed cotton that is processed into fine cotton and then later used for fabric. For the machinery and equipments for production, the company has it all. All it needs is the adequate supply for production. The month of October is the cotton season, and by now, farmers should be picking and presenting their seed cotton to the company. However, the season looks dry now. General Manager of Yanko Cotton Ghana, Chief Ibrahim Zigna, recalls how vibrant the factory used to be. So no matter when cotton arrives at the January, we have the way bridge, the vehicles have to go to the way bridge just for us to cross check and see the weight. Then after weighing, it comes to the January. It goes under the telescope. Then the, we have some pneumatic fans that sucks the cotton from the vehicle into the jeans. And then uh, when it comes, because there are some foreign particles in the cotton seas, we have object or should I say a machine. That's, that's the separation. It's try to separate and then uh, remove the unwanted particles that are within the seed cotton. And, and in the jeans, we have the upper section, which is the feeder, that tries to do more cleaning of the seed cotton before it gets to the gene itself. And when it gets to the gene, that's where the separation takes place. We have the seeds and we have the fiber. Although not enough, the company gets its raw materials from a few farmers in the Upper West and Upper East regions. As a way of increasing its raw materials, the company has started its own cotton farm. This five hectare piece of land is expected to produce some tons for production. So this is the cotton plant. This is how it looks. I don't know why I always imagined it a big tree. But then when the ball opens, 
this is how it looks and so the cotton is picked out like this it's hand picked and that is a lot of work for the farmers so this is what it goes through and then you get your fine cotton processing is done and then the seeds are taken out cotton production expanded rapidly in the early and mid 1970s reaching 24,000 tons in 1977 but fell back to one third of this figure in 1989. As part of plans to improve the cotton industry, the late president John Evans Atta Mills launched the cotton sector revival strategy, also known as the White Gold Project. However, it did not succeed. Executive Director of the Cotton Development Authority, James Rio, explains why. The companies and government came together to say that, look, we want to have uh, a stop of this mess. So let's come up with something called zoning. So zoning was piloted in 1999. And then 2000, 2001, it was established. So the whole production area was zoned to all the companies. Now, in trying to zone the, uh, uh, the production area, so the companies fell out. Because they initially were not investing in the cotton sector, but they just used to go and buy cotton. So now that they have to get an area to produce, they felt it was better to just stop. Then those that were available, they were given the various areas. But at the end of it all, most of them fell on the way because they couldn't pre-finance farmers. And uh, definitely because of the mess that they created, you know, the kind of stealing and pushing diversion of input and fertilizer that came in, it was a bad uh, situation for the company. So even though companies fell out on the way, leaving uh, by 2007, it was just like with four companies. All the same, the problem had been created. So it was very difficult now for the cotton industry to be revived. Africa's leading producer of cotton and the world's 10th largest, Burkina Faso, accounts for an average of 3% of global exports since 2000. Mr. Weyo explained how having a stabilization fund like that of Mali and Burkina Faso has helped sustain their booming cotton industry. Stabilization fund is one that uh, we should all crave for. In all the countries that you see cotton doing well, they all have backup funds or stabilization fund that in case the world market drops the farmer definitely is going to take lower money because the local price will also drop government comes out with that stabilization fund to cushion the farmer so anywhere you have seen cotton doing well they have this uh, stabilization fund even though china is well number two they even have uh, subsidy on cotton prices so their price is 40 percent higher than international price whilst cotton is an international commodity winkle cotton is a private company we should have a stabilization fund being led by government so that at any point in time the farmer is guaranteed a price that he will be getting so that even if the international market is going down government can stabilize the company through the stabilization fund then the company can pay the farmer a good price. He, however, assures that all hope is not lost as government has more plans for the cotton industry. The current government is also dis in discussion with the China uh, Machinery Engineering Center. They are also interested in bringing in machinery that can be used by the cotton farmers to help in land preparation, um, spraying, and other agronomic measures. For Ghana, he believes the solution will be the enforcement of strict regulations in the sector. Government should put in place a regulatory body. That was the first thing. So, government felt that it was a good advice. So they went back to revisit their old cotton development board and said that well, let's go back and take the Cotton Development Board Act. By then, after some time, Cotton Development Board became Cotton Development Authority. So let's go and take the Cotton Development Authority Act and see whether we can amend it to suit our current purpose. So now that they went for it, 
they, they, we had to, they, to send it to Attorney General for the amendment to take place. And by the end of 2016, of course, the government was off. A new government came, but the minister sent the amendment act to Attorney General. Since then, they have, it has been fourth, fourth and front. Well, until the act is passed, perhaps Ghana will only have memories of the once booming cotton industry to live on with. For Joy Business, Karen Dudu. And that's Joy Business this week, uh, particularly today on a holiday. Uh, Karen Dodo bringing us details of that. And that's the state of Ghana's courting industry. Stay with us.